So in this case, we are going to have an overview of our transverse pulses uh, on a string, uh, which can also be referred on a spring, uh, depending with the typical equation that you are given. So as we are having this, I'm just going to put an overview. Uh, as you have, guys, you, you have got your notes that you're going to be working with. But yes, just uh, an overview so that you also check whatever that you are missing or some of the other things that you have. Uh, and also the issue of a recap as we are going to be working with calculations or working with question papers. If you have these basics, it can, uh, it can help you a lot. So remember this part of the transverse wave is actually taken from the waves, all right? Sound and light, which is a basic way you'll be working with terms. There we shall be talking of mostly of the terms, all right? Considering uh, the amplitude as we have from our, uh, from our topics, which is from our ATP, we need to know the amplitude uh, to work with the wavelength, all right? You also need to work with the frequency, the frequency, all right? And also the period. So this is what you have. So all these calculations uh, being taken or are to be made for a transverse or can be made for a longitude now. All right, these are, pulses that we have, all right? So we can just say uh, out of the pulses that we have, they can be, they can differ, that we can have it as a transverse. We can have it as a transverse or we can have it as a longitude. Now I'm going to talk about these terms later on, but I just want you to see the basics of what exactly we are going to refer. So the calculations will be done or the terms that we need here, their definitions, we shall talk about them. So on the transverse, let's say we've got a transverse pulse, okay, from the pulse that we have, and it's transverse, which is now part of where we have for the waves, where we're going to now consider as the transverse, uh, transverse wave, or is it, is it a longitude now, waves? So you see that it can differ with the wave that you're given, Right, so on the wave we've got uh, maximum, minimum values. Talking of the crest and the trough. All right, on that wave we can see uh, superposition, which is the interference, where we end up with the uh, constructive and destructive uh, interference. So all these terms they are important in terms of the just definitions. Uh, that that is the most important part that they need you to have. All right, there's a part that they are, they're going to just ask a definition. Define what is amplitude. What is it that we refer to as wavelength? All right, so uh, just to quickly rush through this part, we've got uh, some typical definitions that you can also use uh, or that you can relate to the one that you have. Uh, maybe you're given definitions. Uh, with those definitions, you see that they are supposed to be familiar to whatever that you're going to have here. So we are given a pause is a single disturbance vibration in a medium, all right? Considering uh, a, a pulse, we are talking of a single dis disturbance, a single disturbance, which is a vibration in a medium, a disturbance that can happen. Uh, if you talk of uh, maybe, let us just consider those uh, things that happen uh, to a C, okay? There can be a disturbance we have those waves at the end that will be affecting. So just a single disturbance. A trans, uh, transverse pulse is a pulse in which particles of the medium moves at right angles to the direction of the motion of the pulse. All right, so what is it here? We are referring to the, to the medium. A medium is simply a material in which a pulse will move. All right, it's simply a material. This one, a medium is simply a material. All right, in uh, which a pulse will move. 
all right, in which a pulse will move. The medium that you are having there is the material in which the pulse will move. So when you are referring to the transverse pulse, when something is transverse, we are saying the particles of the medium move at what? At right angles to the direction of the motion. Take note, they will be at what? At right angles, forming 90 degrees to the direction of what? Of the, of the given pulse. So you are going to notice that a transverse pulse is a magnitude and a pulse length. As you are referring a transverse pulse, okay? Uh, let's say we've got something of this nature. There is uh, a disturbance which happened. So we are going to notice that before this disturbance uh, happened, before this disturbance just here before, everything was normal. That is the position of rest. There is no disturbance there. We are at the equilibrium. All right? So that is the position of rest. From the position of rest, there is a disturbance here. Okay? Going up to the maximum value, then we have a return. So the, the, this peak, the, the one that we relate from what it was supposed to be here, the, up to the point, to the to where it is going to reach, that distance there is our amplitude. So that is the amplitude. The transverse is amplitude. So this distance that we are seeing here is going to be referred to as the amplitude, this one. So that is your amplitude. So meaning to say when you are talking now of a complete wave, something like that, sometimes they will, they will give you the distance depending on what you're given. You're supposed to take halfway up or halfway down. That is the condition of what? Of the amplitude. So this is measured in the, in the units that should be given. If you're given centimeters, use centimeters. Meters, use meters. So depending on the question that you're given there, they can ask you to give answer in meters. So this is the description of a practical activity of generating a pulse, all right? So this is the part that I was explaining of the amplitude and the position of the rest. So how can you generate something of this nature? That is, if you flick the rope or slink spring, at one end, only once, while the other, uh, the other end is fixed. That can create such pulse, all right? A disturbance, a single disturbance, all right? You just, well, then you just flick like this. So you see that this, those things, they do happen. So this is the condition or just a, a, a simplification of how it is going to be, to be like. So what is it that you are referring to as the amplitude? Like I said, that is the maximum disturbance, the maximum distance of the particle from its rest. So as we have this disturbance, the maximum of it, the distance being taken uh, in between uh, the two points there. All right, so I want us to relate uh, another part. Uh, it is important that you just go through. And also the wavelength here, before that, uh, we are going to have the pulse length, not the wave, sorry, we are still on the pulse here. All right. We've got the length from this point to this point where the pulse occurred. So we have got what? The pulse length, which is the length of the what? Of the pulse. Then the amplitude, then we are back to the position of rest, which is what? The equilibrium. All right. So also the pulse length is just a measure, uh, a measure of how, how long the pulse is, how long this pulse is, that is the pulse length. That's just a measure, so it can be measured in the units that you are given. If you are given centimeters, you work with the centimeters. If they are asked to convert to meters, you use the meters. All right. So as we have got these pulses, they can be superimposed, combined together. That is uh, the superposition of what? Of pulses. 
So the principle of superposition is the addition of the amplitudes of two pulses. Take note, take note there. Addition of the amplitude of what? Two pulses that occupy the same space at the same time. So it must be at the same time, same space, and also it must be at the same time. So these can differ with the way that you are given. So that is, we are going to be having two as a result of this superposition. We are going to result with the two. One, we are going to have what we call the constructive interference. The constructive interference, it takes place when two pulses meet each other to create a larger pulse. They meet each other to create a larger pulse. And when they, uh, when they meet, take note the condition, it is supposed to be one of the, of the given two. All right? We have got two things that you have to, uh, to consider. Remember, I was talking about something like this to say you will be having the maximum, which is what? Which is the crest. Then uh, you'll be having a condition. Let's say you'll be having uh, this side. This is the minimum side. This is what? The trophy. So there you are having the trough. So if you are to consider when a constructive interference is uh, to occur, when, when it takes place, it is supposed to be when a crest meets another crest or it is a condition or where a trophy has to meet another trough. So take note, if it is that we are, we are dealing with a crest, it means on this other side, we are supposed to have what? Another crest. If we are to work with uh, this condition, like where we have a trophy here, it means also this other side, you are going to have what? You are going to have a trophy. That is the condition. That is our condition. So please make sure that whenever you are working with the constructive interference, the crest to the crest, the trough to the trough. That is the condition. All right? So having this first uh, part uh, where we are having the crest to the crest, we can see that the pulses move towards each other. Okay? First one, second one, they're moving towards each other so that we have that interference. Then we are going to have this part now when the pulses constructively interfere. So remember, under constructive, we are going to have it what as big as addition. So we are taking a piece, this one, this piece here, and this piece. They are moving towards each other like this. They are moving towards each other. So we are going to add to say the first piece and the other one, they will be added together to give us this amplitude now to the end. There. So we are simply working with the amplitude. Let's say this is three, and let's say this is three. So here, it is going to be three plus three. You have added, it is now six going up. Okay? Then after the pulses, after the pulses pass, like after this pulse pass, we are going to notice that each pulse continues along its original direction, like after this uh, superposition, after the interference. The pulses, they will move away from each other. So we're going to have back to their uh, position. Like they are now moving away to what we had before. So when you started with a crest, you end up with a crest. All right? This is the condition. If you have this side here with a trough, you're going to also end up with what? With a trough. So this is the condition when you are dealing with a trough. The pulses will be moving towards each other. Then what are you going to have here? Add them so it will be like we've got negative, like we've got negative three, negative three. You simply add them together, negative three plus negative three. So it will be negative six, so it will be negative six going down. Then after that, they move away from each other, from uh, from from other. After pulses pass through each other, each pulse continues along its original direction of travel and their original amplitudes remain unchanged. Their original amplitudes as they were before, 
they will remain unchanged here. So it is only the part of what? Interference. When they interfere, that is when the amplitudes changed, but after that, they will remain to, they will uh, get to their original amplitudes. That is the condition. So this just is just a basic that you need to, to know. So that is uh, for the constructive. As I said, this is due to what? The principle of what? Superposition. So we are going to result one being constructive. All right. Then another one is going to be a destructive interference. So as we saw under a constructive, after we are adding and it is going to be bigger, the result is going to be bigger to create a larger house. What about when it is destructive? Under a destructive, we are going to see that it takes place when the two pulses meet and results in a pulse of reduced amplitude. Amplitude is going to reduce. That is when a trough meets a crest. So take note the condition this time. It's not a crest to a crest like what we had under uh, the constructive. Remember constructive interference. It was a condition when a crest meets another crest. But this time, under the destructive, you are going to see that it is a trophy to a crest. Or it can be a crest to a trough. So that is the condition. Moving from one trophy, but it will reach a crest. You are not going to have it crest to, uh, to crest. No, it will be trophy to, to crest. That is the condition. And the, the, the final part, at that point of destructive interfere, the amplitude will be reduced. That is the condition. So the amplitude of the resulting pulse is the sum of the amplitudes of the two initial pulses. But one of the amplitudes will be a negative number. So that is the condition. One of these will be a negative so that is the condition. So meaning to say, uh, if we are having, let's say, like what we are given in this condition, let's say this is positive 6 and this is negative 3, then you add 6 plus minus 3 as you combine, it is going to be what? A positive 3. So it is reduced because one is positive, another one is what? Another one is negative. But after that, pulses move away from other retaining their original state that is retaining their original state as we had before so i want you to go through the basics all right just the basics uh these form i mean uh these notes they are important the definitions just to know what is it that you are going to be referring to uh just find time all right compare your notes and to see if you are having one and the same thing then we are going to work out uh, questions from there. All this information that we just had now, all of this information is important. All of this information. So guys, let us just go through uh, our revisions. Then we shall meet in our next uh, class.